So then let me shift gears. And I wanted to go to one that, uh, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to back up and I'm going to let this one run through again in a minute. Um, what I want you to understand here is that when we talk about crops and we talk about the capabilities that are brought to bear and being able to better understand what's going on from a crop standpoint worldwide. And that's, I want you to think globally on this for a minute, okay? Right now, the best thing that we can do is a once a, probably about a once a month snapshot on what's happening worldwide from a crop productivity standpoint. And if you think about all of the commodity futures trading that goes on, what happens today in Argentina has a very dramatic impact on the price of soybeans in Mississippi, okay? And on futures prices for corn for next year. And so the better we can understand what's going on worldwide as well as in the United States, the better off we are as a nation from a food security standpoint, from an economic standpoint with commodity trading, and from a farm productivity standpoint. So it scans the entire gamut in terms of these understandings. And what we've always lacked was the ability to do things in a very timely and a repeated way so that we can do a better job of being able to predict crop yield. Now what's going on right now with Spatial Information Solutions is they're looking at, at tapping into some new satellite imagery that NASA has put up that instead of a 23-day revisit rate, has a daily revisit rate. And so think about the difference in information that we're talking about if I can go from 23 to 1. And so I can, this, this is an animation that actually shows crop green up in this particular parcel of land. And the greener it is, the healthier the crop is. And the, the more mature the crop is as well. And we've got some modeling capabilities from a crop standpoint that can tell us, based on the greenness and the normalized difference vegetation index, this is a, an index of, of red and, and far red light that actually tells a us a lot about crop growth and vigor. But if we can get that data on a more repeated basis, we can radically change the way that we can forecast what's going on yield-wise in Russia or in China or in Brazil or anywhere that we want to talk about. And so let me back up again and show you this again. Basically, what this is going to allow us to do is say, all right, rather than a once-a-month snapshot, we can do a daily, and you can see here, in the beginning, the crop is, is basically you're looking at bare ground. And over this two-month cycle that this is, it actually is telling us on a daily basis what the health of that crop is. Now think about what you could do with that kind of data if you've got it on an everyday basis. And again, there's several agencies that are really, really interested in saying we could do a whole lot with that kind of information. And so... Um, we have one student that I'm co-major advisor on uh, that just finished her dissertation on this project. And I think it's a really exciting project that demonstrates, again, the variety of things that you can do when you can put an X, Y coordinate on a set of data. So let me wrap it up here, and then I want to open